chair of the House Intelligence Committee, people often ask me, what keeps me up at night? I tell them weapons of mass destruction entering the country undetected and also a catastrophic cyber attack shutting down our water supply, power grid, or banking system. And that's just one of many areas that could be attacked and shut down. Every day websites in our nation's networks are threatened by foreign governments like China, Iran, Russia, and other groups trying to steal our money and valuable trade secrets. According to the National Counterterrorism Executive, the number one thing cyber thieves are trying to steal is information and communication technology, which forms the backbone of nearly every other technology. In fact, $300 billion of trade secrets are stolen every year, according to the United States Cyber Command. This proves we need to make real changes to how we protect our cyber systems. The Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act helps the private sector protect itself and its clients from these attackers and data thieves. The intelligence community has the ability to detect these cyber threats, these malicious codes and viruses, before they are able to attack our networks. But right now, federal law prohibits the intelligence community from sharing the classified cyber threat with the, the companies that will protect us, that control the network, the AT&Ts, the Verizons, the Comcast, those groups. We have the ability to give them the information to protect us, and yet, but yet we have to pass a law to do that, and that's why we're here today. The Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act clearly will do that if we pass this bill. It allows the intelligence community to share the codes and signatures associated with malware and viruses and the means to counter the bad stuff with, with the companies. These companies keep a lookout for these viruses and work to stop them before it is able to attack their systems. Companies that voluntarily give information about the cyber attack back to the government, machine code consisting of strings of zeros and ones, uniquely identifies the malware. Cyber analysts will use this information to better understand the attack and try to figure out who launched it and where it came from. This information is used to protect against similar attacks in the future. Now, the Democrats worked hard to protect privacy and civil liberties in this bill throughout the entire process. We fought for additional privacy protections in the original bill that was marked up in committee. In the version we will vote on tomorrow morning, additional changes are also included in the amendments. The privacy and civil liberty groups and the White House all agree we made important positive changes that went a long way to improve the initial bill that came out of committee. We severely limit what information can be shared with the government and how it can be used. It is also important to note the entire process is completely voluntary and provides industry the flexibility they need to deal with the business realities. The bill also requires an annual report from the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community to ensure none of the information provided to the government is mishandled or misused. This is a very important privacy issue. The review will include recommendations, annual recommendations, to improve the protection of privacy and civil liberties. That review will be done again by the Inspector General. We also made it clear this legislation grants no new authority to the Department of Defense, the National Security Agency, or the intelligence community. They, and at the urging of the White House and others, we included the Department of Homeland Security in the process. So that there's not even a perception that our intelligence agencies or military will be in control of this. The Homeland Security Department will be coordinating as a civil body. In addition, companies that act in good faith to protect systems and networks can receive li liability protection. This is what our bill does. Now, what does it not do? The bill does not allow the government to order companies to turn over private email or other personal information. This is not surveillance. The bill does not allow the government to monitor private networks, read private email, censor or shut down any website. We have a broad coalition of support, more than 100 co-sponsors, close to 30 companies and industry groups and dozens of trade organizations like Facebook, Microsoft, um, IBM, a lot of different groups that are supporting this bill. This is not a perfect bill, but the threat is great. I believe this legislation is critical for our national security and yet deals with the issue of privacy. We can do better in privacy, and we hope to get the bill to the Senate where there will be a lot more negotiation. Congress must act now, and I encourage my colleagues to vote for this bill. Uh, I reserve my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Michigan. I would yield